Yeah, my name's Dan Richards. I'm with Fire Troll Protection. We put the fire system in this building. It's an EST3 addressable system. You only have a few devices. You have water flows for each floor, one water flow for each floor. You have smokes in the elevator lobbies, smoke in front of the stairwells. Every odd floor has a smoke in the electric room for the booster to cover that. Now, when the system goes into alarm, it works at the floor of incident, one floor above and two below. Those will go into a full evac mode with a voice message. All the rooms have speakers, the handicap rooms have speaker strokes. So if it's on level 30, all you get is 30, 28, and 29. That's, and that, but then once you go down farther, then you get your floor above, floor below. Now for the first floor, because the way it was drawn up, you have garage levels two through seven. So the first floor will set off the garage levels it will also set off floor eight. So we get our floor above. And then for floor eight, you get all the garage and then the first floor, because you get two below. And then the same with level nine. That's also done the same way below because of the way the garage is configured. There are heat detectors in the elevator lobbies by the new high rise code. They want to know if there's flames, which is kind of stupid. If there's flames in the elevator, but there's also the smoke, well, it's gonna go off anyways before the heat detector. But by code, you'll get a supervisory alarm if that elevator lobby reaches 90 or above. When it hits 135, then you're gonna get an alarm from that heat detector. So there again, any any alarm device from levels 2 through 30 are going to bring the elevators down to the first floor, regardless. Any of them. That's the way they want it. That's the way the code is written. Any alarm. It used to be just the smoke in front of the elevator. That is no longer the case. Anything over 20 floors. Then for level 1, any alarm will send the elevators up to 2. The voice evac message tells you not to use the elevators, but use the stairwells. Good luck with that. People are probably standing in front of the elevators, waiting for the elevator to come, which it will not. So, when an alarm comes in, before I set the panel off into alarm, I'm going to show you how to disable devices, the speaker strobes, the pressure fans, door relays, elevator recalls, so you're not recalling everything. These are disable buttons. The first button is just what it says. It disables the speaker strobes. You push that, panel silence will silence the, just the internal piezo. That shuts off all the speakers, all the strobes throughout the building, okay? Button two doors and dampers. Pushing that, there again, panel silence. That, that's your lobby doors, there are no dampers, okay? Um, I just left it in there, the way this job is going there will probably end up coming back and putting dampers. <laughs> The next button is disable those pressure fans. You can only have the two, one on seventh floor, one on the roof. Pushing that will disable that relay that starts them. So they won't be coming on because any alarm sets those fans off. The fourth button, pretty important. You want to disable your elevators. Uh, you know, it's your, I hope they gave you elevator reset keys or you'll be resetting that elevator if you don't, or call on somebody. The next button, say just, you have uh, a relay that it opens up your garage door, only, only the exit door. Any alarm will shoot that door up, 
just so people don't have to wait for that door to go up. The last button is disable your access control doors. I'm not too sure. Uh, I set up a relay for them. There again, any alarm is going to unlock those doors by code or change the state or whatever they require. So anyways, all of this is disabled now. You get six under the monitor point. If you scroll this button, it just tells you that you've disabled those devices. And if you want to get real crazy over here under the trouble, if you scroll these, it'll tell you which floors are speaker strips. <laughs> There's 107. We're not going through all of those. <laughs> okay. Under the, you have this alarm button, you have a supervisory button, this is your trouble button, and this is your monitor button. Now you could scroll these buttons, it'll scroll through everything, or if you just highlight it, you have these up and down arrows. That way you can go back and forth to see. Same with this, then you would highlight your monitor switch, and then you could scroll back and forth if you want to, I mean, if you really want to get into it. Alarm, panel silence, like I say, just silences the panels. Alarm silence will only work when the speaker strobes are going off. And then your reset button is self-explanatory. Once the incident gets cleared, you reset the panel. Everything else will have a yellow LED blinking, except for the alarm will, uh, will have a red, which I'm going to set the alarm off right now. All right, I'm going to activate the pull station so we can see what the alarm looks like on the panel. And then you can hear the voice message outside. And that's what you'll hear in all the rooms on all the floors. Okay, so as you can see, there again, First of all, I'd silence this panel because that's just annoying. You get a flashing red light. Under the A for alarm, you'll see a one. Now, if there's more than one alarm, you'll, it'll out, obviously count up. Now you can sit there and scroll. Obviously, we only have the one alarm, but uh, if there was more multiples, do the same thing. You could go up and down, or you can just keep hitting the acknowledge button. There again, now we have an alarm silence button, which all that does is going to turn off the speaker strokes. So obviously I reset the pull station, so you reset the panel, the panel's going to clear. And that's for any alarm. That should cover the alarm situations. Now you have supervisories on the panel, you have tamper switches on all the water flows. So you have 30, at least 30 for the floors, plus inside the pump room, I think there's a total of seven. On top of that, there's three points on the fire pump that are monitored. Pump running, pump off, phase reversal. Hopefully you never see a phase reversal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you see a phase reversal, there's some somebody did something wrong. So, um, let me take that back. Actually, the pump guy left it in phase reversal when he tested it. I had to go in there into his menu and fix it. Oh, he did. Yeah. So, other than that, that should cover all your alarms. Is um, if a if. Huh? Yeah. I was just say, if a water flow goes off, you're going to get an alarm. You're also going to get a supervisory. That pump's going to kick on. So you'll, you'll, you'll see the pump running. Okay? So if you want to re-enable everything, you just hit the buttons again. And then the panel's going to go back to its normal state. Eventually.
Okay, now, there are three duct detectors in the system, one on each pressure fan. If, there's, if that senses smoke, it's gonna shut that pressure fan off. The other one is on the 30th floor elevator lobby above the hard lid ceiling for the RTU-1 unit. There again, if that senses smoke, it's going to shut that off. I hope that never happens, because if that gets shut off, you're going to get a lot of pre-alarms from those heat detectors on the floors. Like I said, once it reaches 90 degrees, that heat goes into a pre-alarm situation. The only way to fix that, to clear that, is to reset that once the floor gets cooled down. Most, the duct detectors themselves, if they go off, they will automatically restore once it gets cleared. You don't have to reset or anything. Same with the tampers. You turn the tamper off, it's going to go, give you a supervisory under the supervisory thing. You reset the tamper, it'll clear on its own. Okay? Pretty simple. That basically covers all of your supervisories. Now, you do have a microphone. There is an all call. Now, if you want to, I mean, I don't, this probably is nothing you're ever going to do. This is usually set up for the fire department. If you press this, I don't know if we, I ain't going to press the all call. If I press the all call, you'll get a green light, key the mic, you're going to get a ready to page light. Once that goes steady, then you can talk. What I will do is we'll page floor one. So if I page floor one, I get my page four one active. I get, get a pre-tone to get everybody's attention. Now that my light's gone steady, check, test one, two. Okay? And you can pick multiple floors. Right. Just, I don't know if you'll ever use that. Usually we set this, just set up for the fire department, but if you wanted to, that's how you would do it. Okay? That takes care of it takes pretty much care of all the functions of this panel. This red box up here is your, it's called a radio dialer. This is what sends the signals out to your central station. So before, right now we're on test until three o'clock. So if you're gonna do any testing, here's the uh, account number and here's the phone number to the monitoring. I don't know if you guys have set up a password, but if you, there is, you'll need to have that password to give to them. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But that's, that's what this is. Now these other red boxes, these run the strobes for the building, okay? Um, one of these is for the first floor, there's two circuits. And one's for the, the other two are for the garage levels, two through four and the lobbies, the elevator lobbies. You're gonna have one of these on every odd floor, except for eight. There's two on eight because it covers garage levels five through seven, plus the and then one for the eighth floor. You'll have another one on nine that does nine and 10. You'll have one on 11 that does 11 and 12. Every odd floor is gonna have a booster. Uh, so if you get a trouble that comes up on the panel and it says booster, blah, 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 you'll go to the booster. If you open these doors, because they have batteries, okay, there's LEDs on the bottom of this booster. The first floor are for the uh, circuits themselves, one through four. Now, It's class A, so one and two are basically one circuit, three and four are one circuit. The next light over is the battery fault light, and the last light over is for a ground fault, if, get, if the booster gets a ground fault. All these, they're listed under, over here on this piece of paper. If you don't, it's nothing you have to remember. But once you get up there, you can go, oh, that light's lit, and then you can see if it's the, the circuit itself, Believe me, I've had people 
in these apartments take things apart. So if they take the strobe apart, it's the speaker, you're going to get a trouble from the speaker and you're going to probably get a trouble from the strobe circuit. I've seen it, hap I've seen it happen at hotels. Because somebody thinks it's a, it's a device that somebody's spying on them. Now this is the smoke control panel. There again, these red lights here signify the devices on the stairwells on the west doors. This column over here is the east doors. These three rows right here, the green are normal conditions of those heat detectors. Once the heat detector reaches over a 90 or over, the green will go out, the yellow is going to come on to let you know. It's kind of redundant because you're going to get it on the fire panel as well, but this is how the, the code is written. Now, if you get above 135, that yellow is going to go off, you're going to get red. Then you also get an alarm on the panel. Same thing. It'll come up on the panel location-wise, what floor and everything. The column next to that are your smokes in your elevator lobbies. So if they go off, you're going to get it on the panel. You also get a red LED here. The next one is water flows. That floor is going to go off. You get it on the panel and you're going to get a red LED here. It's basically just a quick reference as to which floor it is. 90% of the time I'd go look at the panels. <laughs> but that's just I think this is probably mainly set up so the fire department can just come in and take a quick look and see what floor is having the incident without having to, to deal with the panel. There are a couple other lights. You have, a, you have three smokes in the shaft. So any one of those three smokes is going to set, set this red LED off. And then you have two in the equipment room, same situation. Either one of those will set that off. Emergency power, once you switch to emergency power, you're going to get this emergency power light. If for whatever reason somebody shuts an elevator off, you're going to get these lights. You do have duct detectors on the pressure fans. If they go active, you're going to get it on the panel and you're going to get those lights to light to let you know that they went active. It's just a supervisory, it's not an alarm. Hence the yellow light. You have switches to operate the pressure fans. Now, you can sit here and turn these all day long. Nothing's going to happen until you activate this switch down here. So once this gets, gets turned on, you get a signal at the panel to let you know that that disable switch has been enabled. Okay? Now, now you can turn these fans on. There is a air pressure switch on the ductwork. Once it fan comes on and starts pushing air into that switch, it's a, it'll flip these uh, green lights on. Okay? To let you know that the fans are running. If for some reason belts blow or something doesn't happen within a certain amount of time, you're going to get a fault light saying there's something wrong with that fan. Either the power's been turned off, but even if the power, if somebody did turn the power off, you're going to get a signal at the panel saying somebody pulled that disconnect. But if a belt blows or the motor burns up or whatever, yeah, I don't know any other scenarios that could happen, uh, and the air stops flowing through that pressure switch, that fault light will come on to let you know. There again, let me everything get back to normal. You can, now, like, like I said previously, I put that switch on the panel to disable those pressure fans. If you really wanted to come over here and enable this switch, you could turn this off and it's going to do the same thing. <laughs> to me, the switch is a lot easier on the panel. 
There again, this may be just set up for the fire department so they can shut it off. Now, there was a button down here, a switch down here that turns on the hoistway lights because inside your hoistway uh, lighting that they can come here and turn them on or turn them off. Now we're going to get that fixed. I don't know. I just noticed that. There again, I don't know what you want to do with these keys. Once you're done with doing whatever, uh, once you reset the switch, that panel will go back to green. Okay? There is, there is one other panel up on the 16th floor. These panels are networked together. This panel, go, panel basically has two amps that covers floors one through 16. The 16th floor panel covers floors 17 through 30. It's got three amps on it. And there's a data card in that that handles floor 17 through 30. Uh, it's an enclosed panel. Really, I mean, if something did happen, you could go down to that 16th floor electric room. Let's like say you're on 18 instead of coming all the way down here. You could go, you could go to the 16th floor panel and do, you can't disable anything, but you can silence. And you can see what the situation is. Okay, just for your own record. If there is a panel and it has a display on it, it has the same display, it just doesn't have any disable switches or anything. Okay, any other questions? Everything's got battery backup, even though it's on a generator. And then the enunciator panel has some limited functionality. It has the same, it, the enunciator. Because it works by a key, right? We should probably run through that. Well, no, it did, I mean, you have to have a key to open the door. Is that how it is? Okay. Yeah, it's basically, it's, the, it's just this. Okay. It's got the same functions. If it gets, to, I mean, because somebody keeps hitting the drill button out there. I noticed it yesterday, and I noticed it three or four days ago. So there's a, there's a drill button. If you hit the drill button, everything's going off. Don't hit the drill button, not unless you want to evacuate people. <laughs> yeah, when you're saying everything goes off, all the alarms, yeah. all the no, 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 the speaker strobes go, speaker off. go yeah, off. Yeah, it doesn't do relays. Oh, it's a drill. Okay, no, I yeah, it, it won't do any, re and it won't send a signal to the monitoring. I mean, the only way I found out is I, I printed out the history, and I'm going, oh great, somebody's out there because it tells me what that's panel four out there, and somebody I could see they're pushing buttons. Alarm silence buttons on a trouble. They finally hit the panel silence and then they hit the drill.